Good morning, good morning. Keisha Johnson here. Welcome to Waking Early for His Glory. You can find me here every Monday through Friday at 4.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you so much for catching the replay. If you can be so kind and type in hashtag replay so I will know that you are watching. And if you are tuning in for the very first time, please type a number one in the comments so I will know that you are here. And great morning to Miko, Burrito, Burrito, <laughs> Marion, Jennifer Jones. Hello, Ricky, my BFF. Good morning, Victoria. All right, you all know what to do. As you all are jumping on please go ahead and share the broadcast great morning Maggie and um, type in shared so um, that way we will know that you have shared and I am going to log into my iPad and do the very same thing great morning you all so listen I am just here to say I got up um, today was a little bit of a struggle, but I had to remind my flesh who the boss was. I had to remind my flesh that it is not the boss of me. So here I am. I got up. I'm so thankful and so grateful. I'm just so excited to say God did it again. Uh, we are in the land of the living any day above ground. It's awesome and amazing. So y'all go ahead and type in God did it again. I don't know about you, but I'm so thankful and so grateful. So you all give me a moment to um, get logged into my iPad and uh, you all do the same thing. Go ahead and begin to share this out. Remember, as we said yesterday, we are all called to evangelize and what does that mean just sharing and spreading the word of God and so what you all are doing evangelist Ricky what you are doing evangelist Peggy what you are doing evangelist Melissa is it spreading the word of God when you share these videos so um, let's see what's going on here let me go ahead and get logged in so you all take a moment let's just take the first few minutes of the video to begin to share out the video um, make sure that you have grabbed your journals make sure that you have grabbed your pens because you want to take notes and I'm going to give you some scripture references as always for you to go back and to look up and to study on your own time um, so let's just do that so good morning Natasha good morning good morning everybody good morning Yes, God did it again. I'm so thankful and so grateful that he has allowed us to see another day. I'm so thankful and so grateful that he has allowed us to come together one more time. I'm just really excited about it. Um, I had a little fight with my flesh this morning, but I got up. Uh, my flesh did not want to get up out of the bed today. <laughs> my flesh did not want to get out of the bed today so it gave me a little trouble but here I am I have to remind my flesh that it is not the boss of me it does not get to boss me around my flesh no longer gets to tell me what to do because my spirit man is bigger than my flesh my spirit man is the boss so yeah here I am <laughs> so y'all it was really hard today all right let me go ahead and turn off all of my um notifications and everything and I think we are good to go all right so let's jump in uh, if you are on this broadcast live or if you are catching the replay that means that you are on the wake-up list and that is not a small thing I woke up this morning saying God you did it again I don't want to get out of this bed today but you did it again I'm so thankful and so grateful to be in the land of the living and y'all already know it is a great day to be alive so go ahead and type that in the comments it's a great day to be alive and y'all whether you believe it or not it really is any day above ground is a great day so um, let's just take a moment and begin to thank the father for that let's just thank him um, let's just thank him so father we honor you father we bless and y'all begin to type in the comments what you're thankful for Father, we honor you. Father, we bless you. Father, we love you. We thank you for being such a good God. You are good in every way there is to be good. And we just want to say thank you on today. We thank you for protecting us, Father, through the night from things that we have no idea that you have protected us from. We just want to take some time to say thank you on this morning. We just want to take some time today to say that we appreciate you. We are just so thankful and so grateful to be in the land of the living. And we just want to 
would say it's a great day <laughs> to be alive. Um, it's a great day to be alive. And the reason, y'all, I'm so, um, I smile so big when I say that is because I didn't always feel that way. And um, I know most of you on this video may not understand that. You may not fully understand what that means. But uh, when I say it is a great day to be alive, it really truly is a great day to be alive. And I'm so thankful to be able to get here and be able to sit here and to be able to say that it's a great day to be alive. And not only say it, but really mean it. And, and I feel it when I say it. Um, so I'm just thankful. And Father, we thank you for a sound mind. We thank you for waking us up with a sound mind on today. I'm thankful for this day. Yes, listen, thankful for another chance to get it right. Y'all go ahead and type that in. I am so thankful and so grateful for another chance to get it right. We thank you, Father, again, for a sound mind. We thank you for waking us up with a mind to want to spend time with you. We thank you, Father, for waking us up with a mind to want to spend time in your word. We just thank you. Y'all go ahead and type that in. Whatever you're thankful for, listen, it's just so much to be thankful for. And um, I used to ask this question um, all the time. What if you woke up today with only what you thanked God for yesterday? What if you woke up today with only what you thank God for yesterday? I want to ask that one more time. What if you woke up today with only what <clears throat> you thanked God for yesterday? Um, so that gives us a lot to think about, right? What if you woke up today with only what you thank God for yesterday? So, yes. Let's, uh, yes. So, today, um... God just would not let me move on past what we've been talking about for the past few days, maybe what, since Monday or Tuesday, um, just talking about this race called life, talking about this race called life. I don't know about you, but I've been um, so encouraged. And as I was um, studying yesterday um, for today, it just made me realize how fitting this is, how finished, it, how, how fitting um, this is, especially with this time of year. So God is awesome and amazing and he knows, he knows. So with that being said, again today, we are going to open up with Hebrews 12.1. I feel like we should all have this memorized <laughs> by now. Um, we're going to read Hebrews 12, 1 again, and we're going to um, talk about Hebrews uh, verses 12, 1 through 3 again today, but it's good stuff. All right, so if someone can type that in the comments for me, Hebrews 12, 1, and let me just say this for those of you that um, I saw just now um, tuning in. Thank you. I'm so glad you're here. If you're here for the first time, my name is Keisha Johnson. Welcome. Um, you can find us here at Waking Early for His Glory every Monday through Friday at 4.30 a.m. My God, Eastern Standard Time. Um, and if you can be so kind and go ahead and share the video and come back and type in shared. Um, good morning, Bonnie. I just saw you jump on. Good morning. All right. So Hebrews 12, 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders us and the sin that so easily entangles us and let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. We are all running this race called life that God has set before us. And that is what we are going to um, I, I think we're kind of going to finish up today. I think this was kind of the end. Um, I thought that yesterday, but God didn't think so. Um, so um, Hebrews 12, 1. <clears throat> and again, um, some translations say um, to strip off every weight. Some say to lay aside every weight. What does that mean? To put away, to do away with. Um, so let's just go ahead and read our devotional for today and I said my god we have to read this devotional again I'm just being obedient and doing what the Lord says to do so our devotional is this is key to movement and success in this new season that I am leading you into my kingdom is in con my kingdom is in constant movement forward are you willing again same question are you willing and listen third time is usually a charm right <laughs> are you willing to uh, let go of what was vital during the last season but has now become a hindrance to you I don't think we've ever repeated anything that we've done 
three, four times, have we? Um, so God must really be trying to, uh, really want, he must really want us to get this. Good morning, Henrietta Myers. Good to see you. Um, are you willing to let go of what was vital during the last season, but has now become a hindrance to you? But has now become a hindrance to you. The afterbirth is the perfect example of this kingdom key. Before your birth, all of it was vitally necessary to your growth and ability to survive. In this new season, I need you all to type in hashtag new season. I think some of you need to remind it that you are stepping into a new season. And I don't know about you, but I'm so thankful and I'm so grateful and I'm very excited about it. In this new season, the afterbirth must be discarded because the blood is no longer connected. It is dead. Never cling to what has already died never cling to what has already died and that's a whole word for somebody right there never cling to what has already died allow me to show you what you are clinging to that is old and dead i need you all to ask the lord this morning god please show me show me what is it that i am clinging to that is old and dead there are some things that we need to let go. It is old. It is dead. We're start, still trying to hang on to it when it no longer serves us any purpose. So we need to allow him to show us what is it that I am clinging on to that is old and dead and that is no longer serving me purpose. He says, allow me to show you what you are clinging to that is old and dead and what is no longer connected to my son's blood. You must let go of things you think. Think you know before I reveal my all-knowing truth. And I need you all to say again today, let it go. I've been getting so many messages from you all over the past few days. I had to let this go. I had to let that go. This no longer served me any purpose. I see that how this was hindering me in my in, in this life, in my walk. Let it go. There are some things we need to let go. We've been declaring, I'm walking in a 2020 light. And I feel like as soon as I said that, God said, oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, and there has been some work I've been having to do behind the scenes, um, and I feel like, oh, y'all, there's some days where I cried, um, there's some days I'm like, this is too hard, literally feeling emotionally drained, but I said I am going into 2020 light, and what that means is there were some things I had to let go and leave behind, some things that I could not take with me walking in to 2020. So with that being said, just like you all here on this broadcast, I've been having to put in the work. Is it easy? Absolutely not, but it is necessary. It is necessary. Is it easy? No, it is not. And I knew what I was getting myself into when I declared I'm walking in a 2020 light. There's some things I'm leaving behind. Okay, that means you have work to do. That means you have work to do. <laughs> you must let go of things you think you know before I reveal my all-knowing truth. Ask me for the courage and the bravery to let go of what has become old and dead and to grab hold of what is alive and necessary for this new season. So he says today, ask me for the courage. Ask me for the courage to let those things go. And it takes courage to let go of those things. It takes courage to let go of the things that we've known and the people that we've known. And it takes courage to, to let go and stop doing the things that we've always done, you know, because the unknown is scary, you know, and it takes courage. So my prayer is that the Lord gives each and every one of us courage courage to let the old dead things go to let that that can be relationships jobs businesses whatever it is whatever it is that is no longer alive whatever it is that is old and dead and no longer serving you purpose it is old baggage that we do not need to carry with us into 2020 so my prayer is that god gives all of us the courage y'all type in hashtag courage Y'all type in hashtag courage that he gets all of us the courage to let the old dead things go that are no longer serving us purpose. And what does that mean? If we're hanging on to it and it's old and it's dead, it is hindering us. It is hindering us. It is causing delay. And what did we say Monday or Tuesday, whatever day it was? No more delay. No more delay. No more delay. No more delay. And I believe that God is releasing courage. He's releasing courage for those of us that need it, that are on this broadcast right now. And that's for you, even if you're catching a replay right now. Courage. The courage to let the old things go. Let the old dead things go. 
Lord, may we all, may you all release the courage for all of us to do that. All right, so did I finish? Okay, I don't think I did. Ask me for the courage and the bravery to let go of what has become old and dead and grab hold of what is alive and necessary. I need y'all to say, I'm grabbing hold of it. I'm grabbing hold. I'm grabbing hold. No longer, no more. Nancy Shira, change the words that are coming out of your mouth. I say I'm encouraged. I'm encouraged. God, I thank you for the courage. I'm no longer discouraged. I'm encouraged. God, I thank you for the courage. Uh, we have to, and even me, I have to remind myself and catch some of the words that are coming out of my mouth. Because when we speak the words and we release those words into the atmosphere, they don't just, you know, they get to work. You know, when we speak the words out of our mouths, they immediately, as soon as they are released, they get to work and we will manifest what it is that we're speaking. So we have to be mindful of the words that are coming out of our mouths. We have to be mindful. And I have to catch myself often, like, hold on, wait a minute, because as soon as I speak that word, it's going to get to work. <laughs> All right. See, I'm grabbing hold of what is alive. I'm grabbing hold of what is necessary for this new season. I always ask you to let go of what was good so you will reach for what was better. I need y'all to say, I'm reaching for better. I'm reaching for better. I'm letting go what with what feels good. I'm letting go of what I thought was good. And I'm reaching for better. And God is going to give us the courage to do that. And listen, y'all, it takes courage. Hashtag ask me how I know. It takes courage. It takes courage. Yes, encourage equals in courage with Christ. Amen. All right, so that was our devotional again today. <laughs> um, our opening verse again was Hebrews 12.1. And so what have we been talking about the uh, last couple of days? Keys to winning life's race, how to run life's race like Jesus. We are all called to run this race called life. And so the th three things, um, the three keys that we pulled from reading Hebrews 12, 1 through 3 was, again, we must lay aside anything that weighs us down. We must run with faithful endurance and we must fix our eyes on Jesus. In other words, we need to look to the finisher. And so um, we've been talking about a lot of different things um, regarding running the race. Um, and so we're going to um, talk about that again today. And so in Hebrews 12, 1 through 3, we are admonished to do two things, to lay aside every weight and to lay aside every sin. And so... Um, I'm going to read Hebrews 12, 1 through 3 again today, but yesterday I read it for the first time in the message translation, so we are going to read it from the message translation today. So if someone can type in Hebrews 12, 1 through 3, message um, in the translation, uh, in the message translation, it says, do you see what this means? I was going to say something. I love reading the message translation every now and then. Of course, my favorite go-tos are the New King James um, and the New Living Translation. But if I really, really want to feel like, you know, I'm just having a regular conversation <laughs> with someone. I was about to use say something else, but I, I better not. Uh, when I, I, I read the, um, the, the message Bible and I laugh. Yes, I read the message translation. Do you see what this means? All these pioneers who blaze the way. I love when Holy Spirit just tells you to stop it. <laughs> I love it when he does that where your flesh wants to say something. He goes, put on the brakes. All right, do you see what this means? All these pioneers who blaze the way. All these veterans cheering us on. It means we better get on with it. Strip down, start running, and never quit strip down, start running, and never quit. No extra spiritual fat. No parasitic sins. Keep your eyes on Jesus with who began and finished this race we're in. Study how he did it. And I love that. It said study how he did it. And so we talked a little bit about, you know, how to run the race well, how to run the race like Jesus and saying that he is the pattern. He didn't just leave us a pattern on how to run this race. He is the pattern. And the goal of reading the word is what? Not only to read the word, to 
become the word and who is the word Jesus and so as we study you know it says study how he did it study how he ran the race study how he ran the race and finished well study how he was able to run this race with endurance so it says study how he did it because he never lost sight of where he was heading that exhilarating finish in and with God he can put up with anything along the way okay whatever whatever was thrown in his way whatever distractions that came he was able to stay focused and no matter what he put up with it all along the way um, so it says he put up with the cross he put up with the shame he put up with whatever let me read that again study how he did it because he never lost sight of where he was heading that ex exhilarating finish in and with God he could put up with anything along the way cross shame whatever and now he's there in the place of honor right alongside God when you find yourselves flagging in your faith go over that story again item by item that long litany of hostility he plowed through that will shoot adrenaline into your souls y'all did y'all hear that I loved reading this in the message translation Y'all are mighty quiet this morning. Y'all are quiet in the library this morning. Listen, I need you all to read and reread this in the Hebrews, um, and, and Hebrews 12, 1 through 3 in the message translation. I almost feel like I need to sit and just read it again. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to read it one more time before we move on. Do you see what this means? All these pioneers who blazed the way all these veterans cheering us on it means we better get on with it strip down start running and never quit no extra spiritual fat keep your eyes on jesus who both began and finished this race we're in not only did he begin but he also finished not only did he finish but he finished well god wants every last one of us to finish well it says study how he did it. Somebody type in hashtag study so I'll know y'all are still with me. Study how he did it because he never lost sight of where he was headed. That exhilarating finish and, and with God, he could put up with anything along the way. Cross, shame, whatever. And now he's there in the place of honor right alongside God when you find yourselves flagging in your faith. When you find yourselves flagging in your faith, go over that story again item by item that long litany of hostility that he plowed who is he jesus plowed that will shoot adrenaline into your souls i said my god i loved reading this in the message translation i don't read the message translation often but when i do i said i was so encouraged so again we are all called to run this life this race we are all in a race called life we are all in a race called life um and so as i was looking yesterday the greek word um race the greek word race it teaches us that the race each believer runs is a struggle that requires endurance it requires endurance it requires endurance what is endurance what exactly does that mean endurance means the fact or power of enduring an unpleasant or difficult process or situation without giving way it tells us right here and um and he put up with anything along the way and may God help us to put up with anything along the way it says that he put up with the cross he put up with shame he put up with whatever whatever it is that was thrown his way he was able to put up with it so again endurance means the fact or power of enduring an unpleasant or difficult process or situation without giving way I need you all to say no matter what I will not give way no matter what, I will not give way. No matter what, I will not give way. No matter what. No matter what, Michelle, you will not give way. No matter what, Jennifer, you will not give way. Good morning, Veronica. No matter what, you will not give way. We will not give way. No matter what, we will endure. We will endure. We will endure. All right, so today we're going to talk about the rules, okay? We're going to talk about the rules um, of the race. We're going to talk about the rules of this race called life. 
we're going to talk about the rules of this race called life. And if we learn the rules, oh, I feel like I'm not even all the way in the camera. If we learn the rules, we will finish well. If we learn the rules, we will finish well. If we learn the rules, we will finish well. Um, God has a lot to say about this. God has a lot to say about finishing well. And that's why I said, you know, this topic was so fitting, especially for this time of year, just finishing, finishing strong, just finishing out this year, um, just finishing strong in general. So God has a lot to say about finishing well. If someone can type in these scripture references for me as I read them, the first one is Zechariah 8, 9. The first one is Zechariah 8, 9. Um, and it reads, this is what the Lord Almighty says, take heart and finish. Finish the task about building the temple of the Lord Almighty. Again, Zechariah 8, 9. Good morning, I see, my darling. How are you? Um, I'm assuming you all are taking notes. That's why y'all are real quiet and the comments are not moving, right? Are y'all with me still? If you are with me, type hashtag finish. So I'll know that you are still with me. Zechariah 8, 9. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Take heart and finish the task about building the temple of the Lord Almighty. John 4, 34. John 4, 34. My food said Jesus, my food said Jesus is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish the work. My food said Jesus is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish the work. Acts 20, 24, Acts 20, 24. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. If only I may finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me, the task of testifying to the gospel of God's grace. God has a lot to say about finishing. 2 Corinthians 8, 11. Thank you all so much. 2 Corinthians 8, 11. 2 Corinthians 8, 11. Now finish the work so that your eager willingness to do it may be matched by your competence, your completion of it according to your means. Now finish the work so that eager willingness to do it may be matched by your completion of it according to your means. So these are just a few scriptures a few scripture references that I found because God said has a lot to say about finishing us finishing uh, what he has called us to do is very important to you very important to him so I've given you all a few scripture references to make sure that you go back to your Bibles and you pull them up you highlight them um, if you all have a problem with starting and stopping and you know we are all finishers on this broadcast so we don't have that problem anymore but write these scripture references out on index cards and meditate on them again God's word is medicine right God's word is medicine and so if we are sick and in a certain area, we read the word, we apply it three times a day. Just like when we go to the doctor, they tell us to take medicine three times a day with a meal, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Write these out on index cards. Read them three times a day at breakfast, lunch, and dinner and meditate on them and meditate on them. So God has a lot to say about finishing well. And so those are some scripture references that I wanted to leave you all with um, before we before we jump in. All right, so rules for running the race, rules for running this race called life. Um, and before I jump in, I want to go to the word again, go to the word um, Philippians 3, 12 through 14. Do y'all see how I'm just leaning all over this table? I literally feel like I'm sitting on my couch talking to friends. I'm just like leaning like, <laughs> all right, <laughs> Philippians 3, y'all are family, Philip, so I can be comfortable. Philippians 3, 12 through 14. Philippians 3, 12 through 14. Okay, this is encouraging someone that's on this live right now that knows that they are supposed to um supposed to be going live, that you do get a lot more comfortable at some point. It gets a lot easier, it gets a lot less scary, and a lot uh, less overwhelming the more you go live. So go live. I don't know who that's for. Philippians 3, 12 through 14. Uh, I do not mean that I am already as God wants me to be. I have not yet reached that goal, but I continue trying to reach it and to make it mine. Christ wants me to do that, which is the reason he made me his. Brothers and sisters, I know that I have not yet reached that goal, but there is one thing I always do. 
This is Paul speaking from there is one thing that I always do, forgetting the past and straining forward, straining towards what is ahead. There is one thing that I always do, forgetting the past and straining toward what is ahead. Keep trying to reach the goal and get the prize for which God called me through Christ to the life above. And that was um, Philippians 3 verses 12 through 14. And I know that I said trying twice. And I know that I say that trying is a cuss word. But if the Bible says try, we can say try. But then, you know, <laughs> let me just stop there. So the rules for running the race, the rules for running this race called life, the rules for running this race called life. Um, number one, Number one, I do too, Angela. I do too. I really do. Um, and this is a newer translation that I'm reading through, kind of sort of for the first time. Um, it's the New Century version, the NCV version. Um, it's I love this translation. It's just it's a really nice translation. And so um, I've been reading through it um, using this translation and I really like it. Um, all right, number one, remember that God has predetermined our race. We must remember that God has predetermined our race. We must remember that God has pre predetermined our race. This is the first rule for running this race called life. We must first and foremost remember that God has predetermined our race. All right. And so God orchestrates each and every person's race. And so yesterday, what did we say? We must run our race. We must stay in our lane and we must run at our pace. Again, we must run our race. We must stay in our lane and we must go at our pace. We must run our race. We must stay in our lane and we must run at our pace. You know, God orchestrates each and every person's race for them. We're not supposed to be running anyone else's race. We are supposed to be running our race. We are supposed to stay in our lane and we run at our pace. So first, remember that God has predetermined our race. The second rule um, to, to, to running this race called life, and not only running this race called life, but finishing well, is to preparing for the race is our responsibility. Preparing for the race is our responsibility. And so yesterday we talked a little bit about the disciplines, about you know God's training program and the things that we needed to do in preparation. And so we're not going to go through all of that today if you missed the broadcast yesterday go ahead and go back and catch um, the broadcast yesterday so e Hebrews 12 1 urges us to get rid of excess weight and what is excess weight you know negative attitudes wrong ways of thinking it can be laziness it can be worry it can be anger you know we talked about what six different weights I think maybe on Monday or Tuesday so if you missed the last couple of broadcasts I want to encourage you to go back and um and watch them so you know what is that excess weight that um Hebrews 12, Hebrews 12, 1 admonishes us to lay aside, you know, again, it can be fear, um, it can be pride, anything that's hindering us, anything that's weighing us down, anything that's slowing us down. The word says we're supposed to lay it aside, put it aside, put it away, get rid of it, in other words, all right, because it hinders us, it slows us down, it trips us up, it trips us up, all right, and so even a lack of trust can slow us down. Even a lack of trust can hinder us as we are running this race called life. So any of those things as we are running this race that is hindering us. Look, can y'all listen? And yesterday I was just picturing myself just running. Just I'm just throwing off fear, you know, just throwing off, just throwing it off. Just picture yourself running a race and just throwing off and stripping off everything that's hindering you, stripping off everything where, you know, worry, you got to go. Just stripping off stuff as you're running. <laughs> Maggie said, excuse my coughing. You're excused, darling. You're excused. Can you all picture that? And it was just funny to me because as I was, as I saw myself running, I saw myself being being tripped up you know because I'm trying to run with all of these things that are weighing me down and I'm like you're slowing me down you got to go and just stripping off these things so we're stripping off laziness we're stripping off worry we're stripping off pride we're stripping off fear we're stripping it all off we're stripping it all off we're letting it go all right is this helping anybody Oh, thank you what is my what does it say I believe I fast I pray God moves yes 
y'all can see obviously I don't I just put on a shirt <laughs> I'm usually half asleep when I get dressed thank you so much yes it is I believe I fast I pray God moves that's it we believe we fast we pray God moves all right so um, number three number three we must keep on running our race with endurance that's right we must keep on running stripping it all off stripping stripping it all off stripping it all off and I just I just saw myself yes number three keep on running our base with endurance God calls us to faithfully continue running no matter what and just as um, Hebrews 12 1 through 3 said in the message translation it said no matter what you know whatever came along the way that um that he put up with it shame fear the cross all of it and we must do the same we must study how jesus what ran this life this 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 race called life and we must follow him you know he is the pattern he left us a pattern he is the pattern so keep on running our race with endurance what does that mean to not give way no matter what no matter what is thrown at us we will not give way number four the fourth rule of this race called life and we know that in any race even in natural there are rules right there are rules to be followed to help them finish the race well there are rules that we must follow to help us um, finish this race well number four stay focused on Jesus Christ throughout the race we must stay focused and Hebrews 12 1 through 3 tells us to focus on Jesus Christ focused on Jesus Christ. We must stay focused on him throughout the race. We must keep our eyes on him throughout the race. We must remain focused. So when we start looking to the left, to the right, to behind us, we get tripped up. Can you imagine? Again, you're running. You're running real fast. You're trying to look all over the place, seeing what everybody else is doing. And it trips you up. We must remain focused. Is this helping y'all? We must remain focused. We must remain focused. We must turn our focus away from all distractions and we must focus on him. What do we always say? Eyes up. Eyes up. So we are disciplined runners. Yesterday we talked about the disciplines that it was going to take the, to run this race. So we look, we, we right here right now are waking early for his glory. Even if you're catching the replay, we are disciplined runners. You know, discipline is not a dirty word. We are disciplined runners. Some people don't like that word discipline. We are, we right here waking early for his glory community. We are disciplined runners. All right. Number five, the fifth rules. We must refuse to concern ourselves with the past. We must refuse to concern ourselves with the past. What did Paul say here in Philippians? He said, I know that I have not yet reached my goal, but there is one thing that I always do. Y'all type in hashtag always. He said, there is one thing that I always do. He didn't say I do it sometimes. I do it when I feel like it. He said, there's one thing that I always do. Forgetting the past. Forgetting the past and straining towards what is ahead we must be forward focused when we are looking at the past when we are constantly trying to run run this race and we're looking behind us it trips us up it trips us up so number five we must refuse to concern ourselves with the fast with the past say i refuse i need you all to say that this morning i refuse to concern myself with the past i refuse to concern myself with what is going on behind me so that was philippians 3 13 that was philippians 3 13 and pa and, and, and paul modeled you know what this christ life like is christ life is supposed to look like for us he modeled that for us number six we must lean hard into the future we must lean hard into the future we are Olympic runners and we are disciplined and we have trained well for this race right we have trained well all right so we must lean hard into the future we must lean hard into the future philippians 3 14 says i keep trying to reach the goal and get the prize for which god has called me through christ to live life above we must lean hard into the, the future number seven the last rule never forget that rewards await us never forget that rewards await us never yes i refuse to i refuse to concern myself listen that's not, that's not easy but we're declaring that today i declare that i will no longer concern myself 
with the things of the past. I declare that I will no longer concern myself with the things of the past. So the last rule is never forget that the reward awaits us. Never forget that rewards await us. Never forget that rewards await us. And what is that reward? I think we all want to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. Well done. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Well done. And that is the goal. That is the goal to finish well. And the scripture reference for that is Matthew 25, 21. Matthew 25, 21. When we have finished our individual races of faith, we will hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. And that is the goal. 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 All right. So uh, that was pretty much what I had to share today. I pray that this has helped you, encouraged you. Um, so we just talked about several different things. So I would say go back and rewatch or replay the last um, two to three videos if you missed them um, and take some good notes because uh, we are all in a race. We are all in this race called life and it is not easy. All right. It is not easy. And so what we have learned is number one, that we're all in a race. Because there may have been someone on this broadcast that didn't know that, that didn't realize that, that that's what this is. We are in this race called life. You know, we have been left a pattern. You know, we, we have the pattern on how to run this life well, you know, and, and, and um, how to run this life well. And so what does um, Hebrews 12, 1 through 3 tell us in a message translation? We are to study how Jesus did it. So I've given us all kind of scripture references to, to read. And so today we talked about the rules. You know, there are, all, there, there are rules even in a race in the natural, the same here in a spiritual race called life that we're in. And there are rules. And if we follow these rules, you know, if we do what the word says, I've given you scripture references, we will finish this race well. And we will hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. So remember, it takes endurance. And what does that mean? To put up with whatever comes our way, to put up with whatever distractions that are thrown at us and to not give way. All right. And so, um, I'm, I'm not going to read Hebrews 12, 1 through 3 again because we've read it several times, but there are three R's in there. There are three R's, three keys to endurance, three keys to endurance. All right. Number one, it tells us that we are to remove sin because it will trip us up. We are to remove sin. That's the first R. The second R, it tells us to remain focused. And what does that mean? To keep our eyes on Jesus. And the third R is to release joy. It will release joy. It said that Jesus ran this race with joy and it will encourage our hearts when we do that. So I need you all to say that we will remove the sin, you know, anything that's tripping us up and hindering us, we will put it away. We will lay it aside. We will get rid of it. We will remain focused. We will keep our eyes on Jesus. We will not get distracted. We will um, be focused on our race. We will stay in our lane. We will run at our pace and we will remain focused. And the third is we will run this race with joy. We will run this race with joy. We will run this race with joy. All right, y'all. So that's it. Let me take a sip of my, my tea before I read our um, declarations. Mm-hmm. This has blessed me. Has this helped y'all? Hold the line. I decree and declare, I will run the race God has set before me with discipline, faithfulness, and endurance. Hashtag waking early for his glory. I decree and declare, I will run the race God has set before me with discipline, faithfulness, and endurance. I will run the race that God has set before me with discipline, faithfulness, and endurance. I declare that I have faith enough to finish well. I declare that I have faith enough to finish well. I declare I have faith enough to finish well. I decree and declare I will run my race, stay in my lane, and run at my pace. Hashtag waking early for his glory. I decree and declare that I will run my race. I will stay in my lane. I will run at my pace. Hashtag waking early for his glory. I declare that I will run 
the race with endurance that has been marked out for me. I declare that I will run the race with endurance that has been marked out for me. Did I write that right? I declare that I will run the race with endurance that has marked out. Or maybe we should say, I declare, I declare that I will run the race that has been marked out for me with endurance. I declare that I will run the race that has been marked out for me with endurance. That sounds better. I declare that I will run the race that has been marked out for me with endurance. Hashtag waking early for his glory. All right, so that's it. So that was the word of the Lord for today. I pray that it has blessed you. Um, I don't know, it blessed me and I'm super encouraged. Um, so Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this holy word. We thank you for your word that leads us. We thank you for your word that guides us. And we thank you for your word that protects us. And God, we thank you for the pattern. We thank you for the one who has left us a pattern, who has modeled for us well what this race should look like, how to run it with faithfulness, how to run it with discipline, and how to run it with endurance. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, so I had to rewrite um, that, that last declaration because as I was reading it, I was like, wait, that doesn't sound right. So before you all jump off, um, you know what to do. Go ahead and share um, uh, something, whatever your one takeaway is. And for those of you that journal after, I want to leave you with a question. I want to leave you with a question. If someone can type this in the comments for me and we're almost done. Are you actively running in the race that God has prepared for you? Are you actively running in the race that God has prepared for you? If not, what's hindering you? If not, what's hindering you? We talked about the weights and the sins that slow us down, that hinder us. If not, what hinders you? Are you actively running the race that God has prepared for you? And remember, you know, you can either be actively running a race or sitting on the sidelines. And we're not sitting on the sidelines. So are you actively running the race that God has prepared for you? If not, what's hindering you? So I want you all to journal that today, okay? And go ahead and I'll give you all a minute. Whew, to share your takeaways y'all it's not easy doing all that talking for 30 and 40 minutes straight <laughs> on a live video all right you all so go ahead and um take away i will not cling to the past all right come on now that's right we're forward focus we focus on what's ahead not what's behind us mm-hmm mm -hmm. thank you veronica are you actively running the race that God has prepared for you? And if your answer is no, what's hindering you? And God will show you exactly what it is that's hindering you. All right, I have 15 minutes um, before I have to do my workout. <laughs> so y'all go ahead. You will no longer concern yourself with the past. Amen. Are you active? Yes. Thank you, Angela, for typing that in. I know I'm encouraged to, Veronica. I'm encouraged to. I pray that this has blessed you all. Y'all were a little bit more quiet in the comments today. I'm just going to assume it's because y'all were writing. <laughs> Let go of the past, which you cannot change. Mm -hmm. Oh my, hold on. Sorry, hold the line. Henrietta, that's right. We got this. Amen. Your takeaway, Ramona. So simple. I will endure. That's it, right? Bottom line. Take your medicine three times a day. Come on, Miss Ruth Wise. That's right. Take the word. Y'all, I'm sorry. I'm banging my top on a cap on my vitamins. Just making all kind of noise over here. The past is the past. You are traveling light. That's right, Mackie. You preaching. Mm -hmm. All right. Almost forgot to do this. If you are um, tuning in for the first time, many of us are also reading through the one year Bible. We are almost done for uh, 2019, but not to worry. We will circle around and do it again. For 2020 if you want to get the bible the publisher is tyndale if you see the green leaves on the bible you know you have the right one i also share the link to each day's reading and the captions of every video so you can click on the link read it online if you scroll down a little bit you'll be able to listen to it i do both i listen and read at the same time it just brings the word alive i love listening to tom dooley's voice 
Um, and so we read a portion of the Old Testament, the New Testament, Psalms and Proverbs each day. And guess what? It only takes 20 minutes. Somebody typed in hashtag 20 minutes. It literally only takes 20 minutes to read each day's reading. Um, so we have no excuses to not spend time in the Word each day. And you can read... Um, you can break it up into different sections. You can read, um, and I do this sometimes, I read the Old Testament and the Psalms in the morning and then the New Testament and the Proverbs in the evening or however you want to get your reading done. 20 minutes, that's it. Sometimes 15 minutes. Um, so there's that. Um, if you have not already, don't forget to print off your December promises. Um, today is December 12th, so what that means is we are reading December 1 all the way through December 12th. So we read the current, um, the current uh, promise and all the past promises um, starting from December 1st. And you can find these at 365promises.com. And then I will share our spec Bible study method again in the comments for you all. For those that want to dig deeper and study the scripture references I gave you all today. And that is it. I have to get ready to go. Pick up that Bible today. Yes, Angela, it will bless your life. It will bless your life. Great morning, Letitia. Welcome, welcome. All right, so I will see you all tomorrow at 4.30 a.m. All right, bye, y'all.